First things first, um, hello, how are you? Good, thank you. Yourself? Um, not too bad. Um, I read somewhere that the first band you played in was a punk band. Um, how did you end up in a punk band? Um, it was mainly because I started guitar quite late. Um, I was about 15 um, when I first started playing, so um, it was mainly because I wasn't very good. <laughs> no, so. Um, three chord songs, you know, played as fast as, as you can as, uh, you know, usually the first step in any young people uh, making a band. So yeah, I think we developed um, a little bit into maybe even a rock band by the end, but... Uh, <laughs> did we, did we, you, oh sorry, <laughs> did you listen to a lot of punk at that time or...? Yeah, no, it was, um, the, uh, the Libertines uh, were big at the time and so me and my friends followed that back to like the Clash and um, and then you know to like Sex Pistols and and the Damned and stuff like that. So um, yeah, we were we were listening to a lot of uh, '70s punk at the time as well, um, which yeah I guess uh, informed us, but mainly the Clash. Mm -hmm. uh, when did the uh, switch come to to uh, well the more bluesy? Well, let's go back to the beginning. That might be easier. Um, when you were around six, seven, you moved to Chicago, um, a city rich with uh, musical history, especially blues. Uh, how much uh, of this were you aware at that time? Um, not so much the blues, really, but um, there's a lot of uh, late 60s, early 70s rock on the, um, on the radio there. And my dad's record collection got very Americanized. Um, so a lot of stuff he was playing at, at the home was was very American. Um, and then also I think I picked up a lot on, um, you know, I, I basically became an American by the, for the time I was there, you know, because to fit in at high school and stuff, you kind of you kind of have to be, um, you know, relatable to everyone or else, you know, it's, it's, you're going to have quite a tough time. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think that those are the main, the main things that I, I brought away from my time in America. But what you said about this time that, um Around that age, that is the; uh, those are the formative years of of, of a person's life. Uh, yeah. How did it shape you then? Um, yeah, th uh, I think you know, just come back to the music that was playing, and um, <clears throat> you know, the kind of uh, kind of undercover English person and doing American mannerisms. You know, um, uh, yeah. I mean, I, th I think it's just mainly the music and. and uh, having to kind of, you know, hanging out with all my friends who are American and their dads and stuff and, um, you know, going to football games, American football games and stuff and um, having barbecues and, you know, doing all these American things with my friends and their dads um, definitely uh, showed me that way of life, I think. Was that transition uh, difficult? Um, yeah, at first. Um, <clears throat> the, the, well, the, on my first day of school, uh, uh, the three, the three popular girls came up to me and uh, said, "Oh, so you're the new guy?" And I said, uh, "Yeah." And they heard my accent, and uh, one of them said, "Oh, so you're one of those?" And they all turned around and walked off. <laughs> yeah, you had to, you had to uh, become Americanized quite fast, or else, uh, or else, uh, you know, you, you're going to have a tough time. <laughs> Did it come through in your accent and, and those kind of things as well that you um, try to be more American just to, just to, to fit in a, a little bit better? Yeah, definitely. I mean. Um, I'd go back to England maybe twice a year, and as soon as I got off the plane, I'd change my accent, depending on what side of the Atlantic I was on. Did they notice uh, when you got back to England? Did they notice? Uh, a yeah, little I probably still had a little bit of a of a of an accent there, but um, yeah, it was it was uh, yeah it was it was kind of changing changing your personality every uh, every time you got off a plane. Which, as far as you know, performance and stuff that I do now, um, being able to you know switch between the songs and the, the the mood and the character of the songs, I think, helped me a lot. Okay. Well, you mentioned uh, your dad's record collection. Do you have one or two records in particular that you really have a, a fond memory of? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, during the time I was living there, um, Johnny Cash was doing his Rick Rubin American series uh, set of albums, so every time one of those would come out, you know, my dad would buy it and you know, we'd listen to it over and over again. So yeah, those those records really remind me of of that time in America. 
Well, you can hear maybe, well, some people would say you could hear uh, a lot of that sound back into your own music. Is, is, is it true? Or do you see it that way as well? Um, for those albums, um, especially on the, um, the production side of things, um, uh, I think the first track uh, I produced was, was The Preacher, which, uh, you know, has a lot of the same techniques he uses mm -hmm. in those in those albums, I was using them as kind of a benchmark of how I wanted that song to sound. Um, and it goes a little somewhere else in it, but um, especially in the quieter moments, that's exactly what, that's the kind of, that pro exact production that he pioneered on those records is the one that I was trying to, um, uh, Rick Rubin, I was trying to uh, emulate. 